welcome back to 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. I am Hamburger Chariot, and I'm here with my best friend Merth Mauser as we play through this game in a very spoilery fashion. Spoilers, we're going to say our thoughts freely and comment constantly on where these character arcs will go and the build-up that we you may not have caught on your first viewing. Just we're going to speak freely, no filter. So basically, if you have not played this game, this playthrough is not a valid way to experience this game. Leave. Go buy the Please game. Do. Go play it. It deserves your money and your time. This is the best game ever made, and I'll die on that hill. So let's get Definitely. into it. Hijiyama. Hijiyama. I mean, I think mm -hmm. is like the best place to start is uh when it actually opens. The second I can pause it, I'm pausing it. Because we need to go back to the mystery files yes, and shit. It's fine, yeah. I just want the- I just- no, I wanted to- yeah, the year! The, I guess before we get to the mystery files, I may as well, uh, set that up. Um, it's 1944! So when we, I was- yeah, Sorry, you go. You go, you go. Yeah. When I was first playing the game, that threw me for an absolute loop. It's just like, why are we in the past now? Even further in the past now, why are we in 1944? And it's so deceptive because you're not expecting it because when, you know, Hijamas is first introduced. Yeah, he's introduced in, you know, current year, 88, and, or 84 rather. And, you know, you see him with long hair, um, and then, you know, when his story opens, you see him in the, you know, the more 80s uniform with that same long hair. You're not, you think you're going to jump into something similar, like with uh, Juro or Iori in that time period, but, you know, you're going to see what he was doing then. And then it cuts to 1944, and you're like, what the heck? Yeah, that, and I love that, that. That about sums it up. I really love how many time zones we go to in this game. The only problem is I wish that we got to see more of anywhere that wasn't the 80s, to be honest. Pretty um, much. Like, we do get to see a decent amount of the 40s before it goes to shit. Yeah, um, I think we see an appropriate amount of the 40s. We... Only we get a, only a few scenes in the uh, tw is like in the twenties. Although to be fair, I think they use the twenties uh, pretty effectively. Uh, we get a tiny amount in the twenties, and then most of the twenties is during like post-apocalypse when everyone's gone. To be fair, I think that's used very effectively. Um, the sixties, I wish we got to see more of, and then yeah, the sixties we barely see, and the twenty-one hundreds. We, just we only see, see underground in the hundreds. Pretty much. We Which I think is kind of disappointing, but, you know, nitpicks. Yeah, there's like three scenes in all of the 2100s that's not underground, and it's kind of sad, because they look so pretty. And then we just don't see them. <laughs> like, that's the most sci-fi one, and you're not going to show it to me? Okay, but yeah, Mystery Files. So, Iori Fusaka is a female student in the same class as Juro Karabe. She's an ordinary, cheerful girl who's hard not to like. Though her GPA is average, she excels and fails in specific subjects. Fuyusaka is Miwako's childhood friend, and used to be friends with Amiguchi and Natsuno too. Due to strange dreams she's been having, she suffers from insomnia, oversleeps, and even frequently dozes off in class. One morning in her rush to get to school, Fuyusaka literally runs into A Sekigahara at the front gate. It's love at first sight. Debatable on yeah. the whole ordinary cheerful girl who's hard not to like. It's hard to like her. Because also she's hard to dislike. But she's just not much of a person. Yeah, I, I think the main reason I'm 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 as harsh on it as I am is because all the other girls are so much more interesting that she kind of sticks out as on being on the lower end. <laughs> So, if the Juro scenes were all the way, like, 160 events in, almost, we get to see that Iori is significantly earlier in the timeline, because she starts in 48, which is a lot closer to the start. 
And the average person could probably expect that, oh, that means there's not going to be much of note that happens before then. We're going to stay in the 80s, or apparently the 40s. Nope. Nope. The first scene of the game is in 2188, and that Which is a wild the... revelation. Yeah, that that confused me so much. I was like, okay, I don't know if I can make any sense of this game. That I was mean, honestly did... the moment that really hooked me on this game. But we'll get more into that later, because th we have to get we to We haven't even scene. gotten our first 2188 scene, so we'll get to it when we get to it. And especially since it's going to be one of the best moments of the whole game, because it's Miura's prologue. Looks like yes. they're starting to panic down there. Nice. The sooner I'm out of here, the better. That's weird. Someone Why is there the tech in 1944? Key, huh? You could argue that maybe it's a connection to her? Or him, True. rather. Yeah, I mean, where this is spoilers, him. You may as well. Not that it matters. I mean, yeah, they basically Can't established right off the huh? bat that. So you came out to me, Hijiyama-kun. Hmm. This has to be some misunderstanding. You can't be a spy, can you? That is Sounds quite the like revelation the for a right. 1944 setting. <laughs> like, yeah, you're. You're pretty dead if you're a spy in 1944, you know. Yeah. At least if you like, can't get away. Like, really dead. Why did you run off? The military's looking for you. They think you stole some kind of intel. Already setting up very well what their deal is. But you're the professor's daughter. You can't be a spy. It doesn't make sense. Sorry to break it to you. I'm not his daughter. The real Such Kiriko a different Doji level is still over Yama. in Tokyo. Mm. He's so amused what? by Nijiyama's lack of understanding. But the whole spy thing's kind of a stretch. I don't need to steal any secrets on the Sentinels. I'm the one who built them, after all. Another revelation that this girl apparently made the Sentinels? She's serious? She says she built the Sentinel herself, but... I guess it's like, while we're on it, it's like, mm -hmm. this character is voiced by the, is like, legendary Veronica Taylor. Who, who is most, most well known for voicing Ash Ketchum, the Pokemon anime protagonist. Yes, THE it's like Pokemon anime protagonist, or just you know, the classic American dub protagonist in general. Like, if you grew up in dubs and back in the day, you know this voice. It is burned in your brain. Thankfully, I did not grow up with that voice burned in my brain because I didn't watch anime until I was like 14. Um, aside from a couple of stray episodes of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. <laughs> Yeah, that's about the appropriate response. Restrained laughter. Um... I was obsessed with Pokémon as a kid, so yeah, this voice is extremely nostalgic for me. Professor Doji led the Sentinel Project for our efforts in the war. His daughter, Kiriko-san, came along with him, but what does it mean if this isn't her? So we see here the. Hijiyama thinks it's Professor Doji. But it's clearly not, because she just yeah. said she is. I'm not sure I believe this. You built them? Yeah, that was me. I drew up the designs in an editor. Then I just had to send the order into an automated factory. But that's... No, you're probably just confused. That's all. I even implanted the linking component into your head. Though you wouldn't remember, of course. Anesthesia and all. When you came to the factory, you said you were there on behalf of the professor. It was as good a cover story as any. Really throwing a lot at you all at once. Mm. Um, like, I can what keep up with it effortlessly about? now, but it's what a lot. To you? But that's it's a good way to figure It's a good say. overwhelming. That makes sense. It just if it, you're not the real Kiriko, then 
they do throw a lot at you at once. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, it's it's overwhelming, but almost in a good way, because it's a good confusion, because it's supposed to like, what does any of this mean? But not in a way where, well, I'm lost, I'm checked out, I'm not really, you know, registering this. It's mostly... It keep it keeps you wanting to uh, keep clicking, so you so you're trying so you can piece together what the heck they're even saying. Mm. It's such a, an effective, overwhelming feeling, and I love that. I really love it. Then who are you? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Well, so this is another really fucking good song. Just quietly, I think this is in the doldrums. I might be wrong about that though. I can double check real quick in the doldrums, right? Yeah, I think it's that one. I'll check as soon as this ad stops. Lol. Just get an ad blocker. It is not in the doldrums. Oh, which one is it then? Okay, it's not Lonely Struggle. It's not Impending Doom. Hmm. It's Loner. It's Loner. Loner. Okay, yep. Of course, very fitting for Hijiyama. Oh, extremely fitting. Or maybe... This really isn't about who I am. Maybe it's just about what you feel towards me. I love how smug and playful Okino is. Mm. I love it so much. Like, I, I, at first when I was watching this, I didn't know how to feel about it too, too much. Because again, a lot of overwhelming questions at the moment. And especially as we get to the next scene, I really wasn't sure how to feel about it. But in hindsight, now that I'm fully attached to both these characters, I absolutely love their contrasting back and forth. You're kind of a simple guy. Yep. There's something about you, though. What are you even saying? The blush on his face is very adorable. <laughs> I'm saying... I'm gonna miss you. But as hard as it is to read Okino, decrypting. um... With how it's like hard to tell, you know, if he's nope, speaking seriously or earnestly. I do believe that line is earnest. Yeah, I think so too. This is goodbye. <coughs> Just casually disappears in a giant ball of blue. She vanished. That's impossible. It was barely a moment. She can't have had time to run into the mountains. Oh, Hijiyama, you Where have no idea what's going go? on. He really doesn't. He's probably the most ignorant character in the cast. In multiple ways, to be honest. He's very reflective of, is like, of being a soldier in his time period. Because um, not only was, I guess you could say, sci-fi a bit more limited back then, he also wasn't really concerned with that stuff. Mm. Mira was a little bit more open to fiction of his time. Uh, but Hijama is very much reflective of the. Uh, it's like, you know, pri oh, prideful and coming. soldier attitude of, uh, of the 40s. Yeah, I like think that's pretty true. I think Miura would be the progressive one of his group. Partially because he also specifically read all of the sci fi and shit that was available at the time. But he's also generally a lot more lax. Like, he has his moments, because obviously he's from the 40s. Like, he's like, oh, Natsuno, the... why are you in such revealing clothing? <laughs> well, and it's literally just thing. a gym uniform, and it's adorable. <laughs> I do it's... think Miyora still is very reflective of his time period, but uh, Hijiyama even more so. I, I think Miyura would, like, with... I think Miura would get around to more modern sensibilities a lot faster than Hijiyama would. Way Miura faster. would be a lot more open to change. He's the one who snuck into the factory. Versus Hijiyama, who throughout the entire game, like most of his character arc is, 
oh, I'm not gay. Like, yeah. And kind of, and almost kind of rejecting how, how much the world has changed around him. Mm. Again, very prideful uh, Japanese soldier boy in the 40s. It's very reflective of the time period. There's something fishy about him. But if he's working with her, then he might know where she's gone. I'll hide behind a tree and see what he's up to. Tokisaka Shrine, huh? If this log is right, Okino just crossed over. Also, Love. it's that boy from earlier in the game, Aseki Gahara, the one Iori runs into. Why is he in the 40s? Why is he time traveling? What's his deal? Why does he sound untrustworthy and yet not completely untrustworthy either? Like, his tone is so on point. Or like, you can't trust him fully, but yet you can't write him off either. Like, I mm. love that, like, perfect balance that, that his voice has. It's such a difficult thing to nail down, and it's perfect. I might still catch up if I'm fast. Coordinates read Sector 4 in the year 1984. Sector? Give Get him, Ijiyama. There's nowhere to run. Suspicious, Suspicious man. man. Yep, that summarizes uh, Sekigahara in a nutshell. He's a fucking twink. Ijiyama. So you're the spy. He already knew his name. But there's no escaping me now. <sighs> What are you doing here? If I told you, you'd laugh in my face. Answer me, or I'll do more than laugh at you. Yeah, I'll bend you over the tree and spank you, because you're a naughty boy. I'm going to time travel to another oh, era. Ogijiyama, no one's taking you seriously, and I feel so bad for you. Is that a joke? Or are you just insane? <sighs> There's no point explaining myself to you. He's just playing games with me. Time travel? Really? This is reality, not some petty dreadful. Kiriko Doji. You know Kiriko Doji? Yeah. I knew it. Though that wasn't actually her, of course. Is that really true? She said something along those lines, too. She, huh? Must have been pretty convincing, then. His real name is Sukasa Okino. I mean, they got Veronica Taylor that stuff for his own Okino, reasons. so yeah, pretty convincing. Yeah, I love the- Oh, that guy that was a spy pretending to be a woman. That's the Okino we've been hearing so much about. But don't joke about that! You're just trying to confuse me! Oh, you are now confused and will stay confused for the whole game. This can't be true, can it? Was the Kiriko Doji I knew really a man? This and here's this. Tsukasa Okino? And there's that dialogue, yeah. I get it, yeah. You're I guess we'll get into time it travel, when the next huh? thing happens. Yeah, once they meet up again. Try a better story next time. This Kiriko Doji of yours? He did it himself, just moments ago. Escaped from here, into the future. I'm not falling for your lies. I don't have time for this. Step back. I'm going after him. Well, so you do know where she went. Where? Show me. You don't want to get caught in this shift. Keep your distance. Right. Your time travel. I'd like to see you try it. Don't say I didn't warn you. There's some passive about how much Ijiyama doesn't know about anything. Mm. I mean, they very much write him off like, uh, this is a World War II guy. He's not going to understand any of this. Why bother? And now it's the 80s. <laughs> Starting to think he ain't going to show. Oh my god, that hair though. I mean, it is the 80s. He knows you'd beat his ass watching him, son. Probably shitting his pants right now. Turned tail and ran, huh? Guess he didn't have the balls after all. It's time. Whoa, hold it. What? Eat it quick. Eat it quick. 
No, 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 just walk away. Stir fried in sauce, enfolded in sweetened bread. I don't <laughs> trust much in this post war world, but if there's one exception, it's my yakisoba bun. I need a meme of Brock with his trusty frying pan, but it's a yakisoba bun. <laughs> that wouldn't be hard to edit. I mean, come on, his boyfriend is fucking Ash Ketchum. That like is a perfect. very good point. That, act, that is an excellent point, actually. I can't also, that's, it. Also, that's one line that uh, says a lot. I don't trust in this post-war uh, war world. I life. said hold it. Like, I think that one line alone says so much about him. I said hold it. No, he, he's not going to let you leave. If you... Oh. Sometimes if you try to do the wrong thing too many times in a row, you get unique dialogue, so I was seeing if there was any of that. Doesn't look like it. Don't give me that shit. Nearly knocked my friggin' arm out of its socket. You wanna apologize? Oh, did I hit you? Sorry about that. A lot of his just nonchalant confidence. You're sorry? Sorry don't pay my goddamn hospital bills! So, I don't have money, if that's what you're after. Wait, Wajima-san, I heard about him. People been talking about this guy. He's the one who's been snatching all the jackets. I know that voice. Uh, I wish the side characters were credited. I have to trust my own ears for this one. I hate that you're allowed to just not credit voice actors. That's pretty fucked. Uh, they get listed as additional voices, but I don't even have a list of additional voices for this game. The hell? Wait. Yeah. This guy's wearing one of our uniforms. Oh, so you know the guy who owned this. I don't have any relatives around. I'm basically homeless at the moment. So the clothes and the cash were a really big help. He was a generous guy. Them. Tell him I said thanks. Yeah, I love the mocking tone. He's so condescending and it's great. Take care. He's just not concerned with all this petty nonsense, because I mean, he's from a time where things were a lot more serious. He doesn't have time to deal with stolen forms or hey, pocket don't change. don't you walk away! All this. Come on! My yakisoba pun! Well, you're dead. I didn't even get a single bite. You can eat the part that isn't covered in you dirt. You just made a big mistake, punk. Math. He's mm. been homeless for six months. I think his standards has dropped. Mm, maybe. You got a problem with me, buddy? You're the one who's about to have a problem. You heard him, boys. Sick him. Now that it's been on the ground for so long, now I'm not going to Stop! We're sorry! Look! We'll get you another snack, man! I've got no mercy for people who waste food. Especially Very reflective Yaki of his time Sobobon. period again. Hmm. Like, yeah. The even hell simple, happened? Even something as simple as food was, uh... You really had a ration back then. You had to be careful of every little resource, because that's how war times are. Every every single person from the civilian to the soldier needs to pitch in their lifestyle to, you know, keep things going. So, yeah, it would make sense. If, like, I, it's like, you can't waste anything. Like, how dare you waste... It's like, you make me waste food. I'm offended by that. I thought you called me up for a fight, Wajima. Someone want to tell me what I missed here? And who are you? A friend of theirs? I'm Nenji Ogata from Sakura High. AKA here... another best boy. Yep, here we have Nenji Ogata. Nenji Ogata, voiced by the late Billy Kometz. May and... he rest in peace. May he rest in peace. And this is, uh... This is the best performance he's ever done in his entire career, and I stand by that wholeheartedly. It's worth <laughs> noting, just quickly, um, his English voiceover for Billy Komets, 
He's the same voice actor that voiced the protagonist of Jojo Part 4, Josuke. Yep. Who are very similar characters. He's very familiar with this uh, character type. To uh, the point to where, to be honest, I reckon it was a pretty intentional reference that that's they kept point. that. Because yeah, it's just, the... it's too great. Like, to really get it, get into it, um, similar to uh, Cassandra Lee Morris, uh, especially around when this time game came out, uh, Billy Kometz was a voice I was extremely, extremely familiar with. Like, literally every show I watched, every game I played, he was in there without fail. It was a running joke to me, all, almost, that, well, there's Billy Kometz, of course he's there. <laughs> and... By the time, you know, I got to this game, I was like, of course he's here again. I was thinking, like, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fully take him seriously with how familiar he is. And similar to Cassandra's voice for Tommy, I was able to completely forget how much I recognized him. And just be fully immersed in this character, and he honestly delivers one of the best performances in this game. Like, it, him and Tomy's performances really, really blow me away. And Out of the people who only voice, like, two or three versions of their character, because everyone voices, like, two or three versions of their character, because there's the, there's the main current one, there's the robot version, most of them have previous loops that they voice, like, at least one. There's quite a lot of one loop ago characters, so like BJ, Miyuki, Inaba, etc. Um, so out of the people who voice less character versions, out of the people who aren't voicing like six people at the same time, like Allegra Clark as Iori Fuyasaka, mm -hmm. or I think it was Ben Diskin as Kutashiba? Yes, Ben Diskin, Kutashiba. Ben Diskin. So, Outside of the people who are giving career-defining performances because they're voicing like 17,000 characters at once, um, yeah, I would say Billy Kometz gives one of the best performances in this game. Because there's a level of just how are you voicing so many completely distinct characters that all somehow still sound like the same person. Um, and that's a level of impressiveness that people like Allegra Clark and Ben Diskin manage to flex in this game because of how much material they're given. But mm -hmm. here, with Billy Kometz, all of their energy is being focused into essentially one character, and it's... It you feel shows. it. It really shows. And I gotta say, I since I am uh, we even watch all of JoJo in Japanese, I didn't get to experience uh, Billy Kometz's Josuke, so my... A uh, history with his voice comes from Ferdinand from Three Houses, uh. Mark from Royal, uh, and Nye from Agretzko. All very different um, kind of performances from him. So when I got to 13 Sentinels, this was my first time hearing him play a punk. And I, when I first heard that he, when I first could tell that he's playing a punk, I was like, is this voice really that natural for a punk character? I was wrong. I was so, so wrong. He makes such a natural and convincing punk. Like, it's not easy to make uh, curse words work naturally uh, with like, how a character speaks, and he does it effortlessly. Mm. Like, I really undersold how well he could do this. Like, I have man, to agree. did he prove me wrong. I didn't ask and I miss the guy. I really do. Wait, it's you. You're that jacket snatcher. Uh, Hijiyama or something. Takatoshi Hijiyama, at your service. The condescension <laughs> immediately setting up that these two are not going to like each other. I told them I didn't need the help, but they wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, I'll bet. Oh, I love how- I love how smug and condescending he sounds. Oh, I eat that up. Drop the tough guy act already. I could say the same thing. Don't go picking fights you can't win. I've heard enough, douchebag. And you owe me a fight. 
the way he says douchebag there, it just it sounds so good. It just sounds so effortless. Like, Come at me. yes, you know how to curse, and I love that. That is a skill. Well, you're gonna regret it. <gasps> oh, who's that? Come at cute? me. Bring it. Oh my god. What the? It's no the femboy. No time for fighting. I gotta well, see this. Look at this. I guess you fit right in here in the 80s. Here I figured yeah. I'd have to check up on you. And if you're really observant, you'll be able to tell that that's the same face and hair mm -hmm. color. What? I know that voice. And that face. Wait! I've thought about oh, it every no. night! I came for a fight, and I'm getting one. Out of my way, damn it! And a fight ensues that we do not know the winner of. Because they're both Looks very like good at street done. fighting. Think it was a draw? I'd believe it. This is about where I last saw him. He has he to be chased close by. Him all night. <sighs> that bastard kicked like a horse. Pretty tough for a thug. He almost had me for a moment there. Yeah, I think it was a tie, because, I mean, because Hijiyama he, he probably would have said if he won, and he wouldn't admit it if he lost, mm. but he said almost had me for a moment, implying he didn't exactly lose, but he's not acting like Looks he won like either. Locked. I love his walk cycle, just this big, tough guy, is like, about well, that's it. that's his run. A, yeah. Run. And this run is cycle. his walk. There's so much personality in all of them. It's just so stoic and guarded. I love it. Uh. Guess you found me. <laughs> Kiriko-san. Oh, there's Were you the blush. looking for me all night? Still as reckless as ever, huh? Uh, don't try to talk around it. For six months. I. I know who you are under those clothes. Yeah, yeah. I figured you'd be here soon, so got some breakfast for you too. Half a like year nice. I've been searching for you. Half a year thinking of what I'd say to your face. And you can really feel it in his voice performance. Like you really feel he has been waiting half a year for this. This has yeah. been stewing on his mind. I got you some yakisoba pond. You didn't get any yesterday, right? You got yakisoba pond for me? I love how his <laughs> voice changes. Like, he's initially, like, going to be angry, and then when he hears that Okino got him his favorite food for breakfast, it's like, I, 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 I can't be angry at you? What? It's like a dog. It's like, yeah, they're mad, and then you say treat, and like, oh. Hey, look, that, that's not the point! And he's trying to be angry and he can't because he has a crush no. on this person, is confused about them, has been wanting to see them for so long, and they got him his food. He's been thrown Take all sorts of directions. We're going, whether you like it or not. And if I say no? His voice is almost trembling. Mm. <laughs> What'll you do? Mug face. Push me over? Pin me down? And I love that. She is so leaning into- well, hey, he is so leaning into this. I would never! Besides, you're a man, aren't you? Why don't you me. find out? Exactly! Me. So <laughs> me vibes. When I was first watching this, I was kind of- I wasn't- I was just kind of a little wary of it, wasn't too into it, because, again, even though technically Vanillaware made this, I saw the Atlas logo on it, and I was a little reluctant about how they would treat, you know, two guys like this, like, alright, what kind of jokes are we gonna make here, tread heck carefully, game. Yeah, but the now last... that I'm more- they generally don't, don't have a good track record when it comes to the gays. Either they, they manage to not fuck it up when it's lesbians, or it's like... <sighs> Everyone says Persona 2 has good gay representation because you can be bi in it, but like... 
it it's one line that means basically nothing. Go ahead. I'll hear you out. But, I mean, we but shouldn't yeah. get into that tangent. Yeah. Well, I was what I'm just trying to set up is that yeah, I wasn't very wary of it. Not sure if I was enjoying it, but now that I'm more familiar with their dynamic and more familiar with how the king writes these two, I'm actually really into their back and forth. Like, this is a scene I absolutely enjoy so much more with hindsight. Mm. Um, what will you do? Push me over? Pin me down? <laughs> like, I got- I, I love their- their absolute contrast. Like, you got a- you, you got a guy from- You got these soap upon for me? <laughs> Sorry, I, just, I had to replay their lines. Yes, I think I'm going to do that more often now. Like, you have a guy from the 40s who's asking a lot of questions. He's not comfortable yet asking himself, um, because he was- he's grown up in a very traditional place mm. where this concept was foreign to him, compared to someone from so far in the future where they're not even questioning this slightly, and they see- because Okino oh, is from the 2100s. Like, she, he's all the way in the future. Yep. Um, Why it's disguise a good contrast. Yourself as like, if you're going to have a character like Hijiyama, it's an excellent idea to uh, have him bounce off with somebody who is nothing like that. You know, he's like, but, but you're a guy, which, eh, I don't really care for that language, but, you know. Compared to, you know, like, so, will you pin me down? Just, if you're going, if you need to ride someone like Hijiyama, pairing in a, him up with someone who is nothing like that makes for a fun dynamic. Hmm. Even convincing everyone you were a girl. Professor Doji thought it'd be a good idea. See, he's... Well, all Shikishima's tech really began with him. Shikishima, so we're throwing that term out now. Shikishima made incredible strides after the war, and a lot of that was thanks to his work. Though it didn't hurt that I taught him about his future's technology. Which is a major no-no in sci-fi, just by the way, and if you're a lover of sci-fi, that should be raising massive red flags. Yep. But why? Why would you make that deal with him? For the Sentinel. Sentinel. Coming back to terms we know. So you're actually Tsukasa Okino. Why do you wear women's clothes? Very Doesn't good feel question. Great to hear you say it like that. You weren't Thank complaining you. when you confessed That's actually to refreshing me. to hear Okino say that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Calling him out right then and there. I'm not exactly the picture of masculinity anyway. Better than trying to pass as some militant with a buzz cut. That's a good so point. So why are you dressed like that now? Because I know you like it. <laughs> I, I will say, that interaction of, so why are you dressed in it now, because I know you like it, is just... In one sentence, that sums up their dynamic in a nutshell. Yep, yep. Like, um, on the one hand, I know why, why they really have Okino, you know, constantly cross-dressing. It's just for the trope. It's just for the appeal. But if you have to do the trope, you make a character that leans into it like this. Like, I appreciate that. You yeah, have this fun is definitely it. the least angry I've ever been at a stereotypical trap character. Because Japan is a lover of that character archetype. There are many, many famous examples of yeah. men that are so ludicrously feminine that they dress up as women, and then once you start like undressing them, they're like, Oh, I'm a boy, by the way, in the most feminine voice ever. And it's not like a, hey, people can wear whatever they want kind of way. It's a, oh, it's hot, th this girl was lying to you kind of way. Like, it's a very different sort of way that they write it in Japan. This isn't progressive. If anything, this is, like, kind of homophobic most of the time. Which is why I really don't like the character archetype a lot of the time, because it has very sketchy connotations yeah. associated with it. This is definitely the least bad instance I've ever seen of it. I'm still not a fan, but I, I respect this. 
in a way that I don't respect most other iterations of the trope. Oh. <laughs> You're a funny guy, Hijiyama-kun. Oh, you know, sees right through him for like from a mile away. Like he, he can tell the millions of closets Hijiyama has shut himself in, and like, no, nope, he's he's gonna he's gonna say it how it is. He's not gonna even humor it. I mean, well, he is humoring it, but you know, not gonna sugarcoat it. There, there's the right word. Mm. Let's say some binaries work for me and others don't. Oh god, this line got so much of Twitter angry. And every Which, single one of them who got angry has never played this game before. And it's so dumb, because in context, especially with the conversation beforehand, this line reads as though, you know, Ogino doesn't really care what people see him as, like, one way or the other. Not that... It's like, not that the localization is literally making Ogino non-binary, that's not what the line means, he's just saying, just, you know... I don't really, it's like, you know, some people see me this way, some people see me that way, you know, I don't really care either way. Like, but screw context, am I right? The localization is just bad because they translated this line that can be easily read out of context horribly. It's especially annoying because none of the characters ever refer to Okino as a woman, or even as non-binary. Okino is always explicitly male. The only times where they're ever referred to as anything other than, like, he, him, male, boy, man, is specifically when he's disguising as Kiriko Doji, which, like, obviously... And it's very much a disguise. They're not non-binary, they're not a woman. They're not trying to be the stereotypical trap archetype that Japan loves writing so much. Or at least not in the same context. But, like, this is a dude. They are always yeah. considered to be a dude. Yes. This one line does not change that. Nope. And people hey. try to argue that it changes the entire context of the game, and it it's a completely different game now, and it's just like, you didn't play the game, did you? Nope. Like, like, hey, people can have their head cannons, but I think the game makes it pretty clear what that, yeah, Okino is a guy. He refers to himself as as that. And yeah, everyone else refers to Okino as that when he's not in disguise. It's just it's very clear that, you know, despite him not being very masculine, um, despite him having a lot more feminine traits, naturally, he's still a guy. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. This lets me hide the fact that I'm even alive. Sentinel. So what did you plan to do with the Sentinel? It was an accident that it showed up at all. It was never meant to be there. I mean, come on. You've seen it. You think they could make that back in the 1940s? Even here in the 80s, it's out of our league. That's not human craftsmanship. It was made in the future, in an automated factory. Second time they've thrown out the automated factory term, which, to be honest, we never really hear a ton about, but they do explain it enough. I think this I think is yet another thing that they would have fleshed out more if they got to make the other 50% of the game they wanted to make. Yeah, I really wish we got a lot of those scenes. Like, maybe I didn't need a lot of the slice of life stuff, but I really would have liked more of the, uh, the scenes that would have fleshed out the lore and, uh... One, pa one particularly interesting character that they really wanted to write a lot more of in the part of the game we didn't get is one loop ago, Hijiyama. Really? Who... We never that character! I yeah, didn't know he's, that! He's, like, not in the game, but apparently he was going to be a fair amount of the content that was cut. Oh, wow, that makes me so sad! Oh, why would you tell me that? Now I'm very sad we didn't get that. Well, I need to provide the commentary for the audience. I know, I know. Darn, darn you, Let me put Vanilla it in Ware, how dare you make cuts that you need to make so that the game comes out. Let I mean, me I get it, it in layman's but I'm still terms. Sad. There was an incident and it got broken. Our goal was to fix it there so it could fight again. 
But wasn't it meant to be used against the USA? Ah, uh, Then who or what was it made to fight? Never mind. You poor, poor boy. I have you to really get back, know. no matter what. If we can finish the Sentinel Project, we can win the war. You're a good guy, but kind of an open book, you know that? Say yep, whatever you want. Too. I don't care who you really are anymore. Just get me home. I know about the air raids. And Okinawa, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. I can't just let those attacks happen. I can't let those people die. So you did some reading in the history section. Between all the manual That's labor you've topic. been doing. And your living but conditions, or it makes well, sense for the game to bring it up. Like you can't mm. really avoid it. Especially since it's literally a Japanese game. Like it's yeah. they're going There's to no bring it up. Yeah, you have to. You have to. There's no way around it. And of course, Hijiyama would, especially would bring it up. It's like that's his time period. Mm. To him, it's like a year later. These horrible, horrible raids happen that he thinks like if I can go back, I can save. I can save my country, I can save those people, not knowing... I will say, yeah. briefly tangent off this topic, yeah. I do much prefer the way it's handled with Miura, where we get to see him reading the history textbook that yeah, explains yeah, that... the situation, oh, I and love we this. see his live reaction. Oh, Just that throw, so that, throw that on the mountain of reasons why he why Miura is my favorite character in this game and one of my favorites of all time. I am so excited to get to his story. You're a lot more determined than I expected. You've been keeping tabs on me. I do have one suggestion. There's something I still need to do. And that something is here in 1985. I just need you to wait until that's finished. Actually, I'd really appreciate your help with it. It does involve you, after all. When it's finally all over, then <laughs> you're leading you can him ask on me with to those do words. Whatever you want. You can ask me to do whatever you want. How's that sound? And the blush. <laughs> like he has Hijiyama on a I leash want. and slowly pulling him in. Anything I want? <laughs> no, I. What oh, I want Ijiyama. is to go back to my own time. If you're sure. Still, think it over. Reinforcing that it can be anything. My base is over there on the second floor. You want to come Where up are to you my going? No I'm wearing here. a uniform. Where do you think? Oh right, your yakisoba pawns on the desk inside. <sighs> wow, was that your stomach? You haven't eaten anything since yesterday, huh? Go ahead. The door's unlocked. I also haven't eaten anything since yesterday. I should fix that at some point. You can't now me with I'm, food. I'll live. I'm not an animal. Stop being stubborn and go get some breakfast. <laughs> okay, now I just has full control over this conversation and basically mm. Hijama in general. I love that, you know, you can't fully read him. Where do you go now? And yeah, I Maybe just love it. Really you was can't just fully manipulating me. Well, it is Yaki Soba Pan. Not much I could do. I mean, hey, breakfast is breakfast, am I right? Especially if it's well, from your boyfriend. As long as I've got it. <clears throat> so good. It's not gay if you're eating Yaki Soba Pan. Telling yourself so that, Ijiyama. Yeah, it's so spicy. No, you know what? It's not gay if you wear the yucky soba pan. I'll let you figure out where. I see. I hit the spot. <laughs> oh, I see. Someone yeah, has to have written that at some point. No, not like, just written it. Someone's drawn it. Well, no one's drawn anything for this fucking game that's NSFW. Nothing nah, good, anyway. Right. If I had artist hands, I would probably legit be making like all of the content for this game. For like NSFW anyway. Cause like no one else will. If he's in that uniform, he's probably going to school. 
But what's he trying to accomplish there? That is a good point. I don't remember that question. For the now, answer to that I question. should find Okino again. It won't do me any good if he slips away. I think he's working on getting Ogata. Oh yeah, well, Ogata well and the key, and then that doesn't go anywhere. But that's fine, we'll get to it later. To be continued. And we still can't go to these fucking things yet, because we're still in the prologue, which annoys me greatly. But anyway, that is about it for the prologue. We spent 50 minutes on this. I apologize, I love these two so much. Hey, that's less time than the first time we recorded this. I went on so many tangents about them the first time. And we spent like so 10 minutes tangents. on the localization. I, I spent and I spent another ten, ten minutes just talking about how good their back and forth was, and like I re and I, that's all I can say. They just have a really good back and forth. I'd like that's how you write a couple. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's just so fun to watch. They are definitely very well written. Just not a favorite of mine because it's two character tropes I'm not huge on. Yeah, I fully get that. Um, I guess it's because I'm I guess you could say less exposed to the trope compared to you. Although, admittedly, I did see the trope when it started, I, you know, was kind of wary of it, but I think I would be a little bit more on your side if I had seen it a lot more by comparison. Because so part fully of it is, it most yaoi manga, and I'm not talking, like, just straight porn, but, like, yaoi manga with stories and shit, like, your Junjo romanticas and stuff like that, even visual novels, really, this character dynamic is, like, most gay relationships in all of them so you get yeah. very tired of it very quickly and i remember you gifted me dramatical murder which is like an <laughs> all-time classic yaoi visual oh, novel no. and if it's anything like their previous work i'm expecting it to end up being quite similar so i can see why you loved it I did not love it. I bought it to you to share so you could share in my pain. I oh, should not God. have been allowed to play that. I really shouldn't have. That's right, because it's got like animals and non con and guru in it, doesn't it? I suffered. You have to as well. Anyway, so that's Eventually. this episode. Yeah, so that's this episode. Um, any last thoughts? Uh, just very excited to get to the next one. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's gonna do us for this session. I'm assuming we have time to record more? Oh, we have plenty of time. We can probably get through, hopefully get through all of the, uh, prologues, maybe. Awesome, because we'll this means we've caught up to our initial recording. Right! Because right, this have. was the last section we recorded on the first attempt that is not getting published. So from now on, it's going to be a lot more genuine reactions, because it will actually be the first time we've seen them in at least a long time. Yeah. For me, it's been at least a few months, I think, since I finished this game. Like, the for second time around, I mean, because I've played the game twice. Um, for me, it's been about a year, so, yeah. And I think you only played it the once, yes? Yeah, I only play it, played it once. Yeah, that's going to do it for today. We will catch you in the next one, which we're going to start recording very soon. This is Hemborg Chariot and Mirth Mauser signing out. See ya, everybody. Bye. See ya.